गुड मॉर्निंग डे स्टूडेंट्स आर्य द्विवेदी तन्वी मयूर आनम साधिका प्रथमेश गौरी बालचंद्र गुड मॉर्निंग टू ईच ऑल ऑफ यू सो टुडे वी आर जस्ट गोइंग टू रिकैपिचुलेट द सिल्क रोड दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड सो लेट्स बिगिन गुड मॉर्निंग सनिका स्टे कनेक्टेड Uh, so the students uh, today we are going to have uh, this uh, silk road uh, 5 okay so i hope uh, core concept like why it is called silk road okay why it is called silk road what is the significance of the silk road and why did the narrator why did the narrator want to uh, you know describe about this uh, and or you can say why did the narrator uh, you know give the title to this lesson as silk road okay so these things um, let us know today uh, and uh, along with that we'll recapitulate okay the part that we have already um, okay so dear students as you can see on your screen uh, it's a core concept that i'm going to um, discuss with you today so uh, silk road um, was the ancient trade trade road actually it was a trade road from china okay silk road was an ancient uh, trade road from china uh, tibet kashmir and up to afghanistan okay then this route went further up to the european countries as well it has been so named why it has been named as silk road silk why silk because silk was an important commodity that was traded along with dry fruits and horses okay horses were also traded along this route so silk was an important commodity that was uh traded along with dry fruits and horses so this route uh, as the trade business of uh, silk was carried out through this road mostly therefore it is called silk road okay this is called silk road okay so what is silk road let us again discuss in a greater detail so you can see dear students uh, the silk road derives its uh, name from the lucrative trade trade means business commerce okay uh, in silk carried out along its length beginning in the han dynasty in china okay it started from han dynasty which was in 2000 uh, 207 bc to 200 20 bc so dear students before our you might be knowing the before our christian date started ad after the uh, death of uh, thing uh, after the birth of Christ, uh, you know jesus christ then modern uh, thing started like ad 1 ad 2 likewise now is 2000 okay 20 so likewise before ad it was bc before the birth of christ before the birth of christ so bc used to go uh, backward actually okay B B bc used to be counted backward like 207 206 uh, like this okay uh, so anyway so bc is before the uh, birth of christ actually okay so the silk road derives its name from the lucrative trade in silk carried out along its length beginning in the han dynasty in china Uh, then silk road was a trade road between china tibet india and extended up to afghanistan okay then the silk road was an ancient trade road that linked the western world with the middle east and asia okay so the silk road was an ancient trade road uh, that linked the western world with the middle east and asia it was a major conduit for trade between the roman empire and china and later between medieval european kingdoms and china 
okay so this road was very um, busy uh, road which uh, linked the western world with the middle east and asia okay uh, the european countries with the middle east and asia that uh, is to link to be earlier there was no flight service okay only the um, water service was there uh, through waters and through the mountainous terrain of afghanistan and all that okay so that is the route which is to connect the western world with the middle east and asia it was a major conduit means a link for trade between roman empire and china and later between medieval european kingdoms and china so that is the significance of silk road okay so uh, in order to go to mount mount kailash uh you have to pass through this uh, road that is why the writer has given the name as silk road because uh, through the silk road you are supposed to pass through to be able to uh, you know reach mount kailash now what is the theme of the lesson so let's just revise uh theme is the list lesson is a travel log by an adventurer nick middleton giving picturesque visual to the readers about the journey to mount kailash okay so this is a travel log travel uh, the travel log means uh, an account of travel okay so a travel log by an adventurer he was uh, the writer nickel nick middleton is an uh, adventurer okay he is an academician he is an adventurer so it is a travel log by him Uh, giving us a picture ex visual okay a uh, picture ex because whenever he describes some of the places some of the you know roads some of the objects some of the animals then it appears to us that they are in front of us that is why picture ex visual to the readers about the journey to mount kailash the writer had undertaken as you can see here the writer had undertaken the thrilling but arduous journey of the tibetan himalayas um, tibetan himalayas to take part in the ritual called koda so what is the purpose of the writer in visiting this place uh, mount kailash what was the purpose besides uh, the traveling what else was the purpose the purpose was to take part in the ritual religious ritual which is called koda and which is done only in mount kailash in a place near darchan the writer had undertaken the thrilling but arduous means risky journey up to the arduous means very much uh, adventurous um, arduous journey up the uh, tibetan himalayas to take part in the ritual called koda okay so that is the primary objective for which the writer started uh, towards mount kailash okay this is the account of his journey through the mesmerizing mountainous uh, terrain up to a place called darchan from where he would trek up to the mountain so this is the account of his journey through the mesmerizing mountainous terrain okay it's a mountainous terrain okay uh, there were a lot of zigzag uh, you know windy road routes so that is why it is risky and arduous as well through the mesmerizing mountainous terrain up to a place called darchan from where he would trek up to the mountain okay so from the Dar darchan he had to trek up to the mountain he got to go on foot there is no access of vehicle so till darchan you can go by vehicle and after that you've got to go on foot and you've got to um, you've got to trek up to the mountain and go to a place where you can uh, take part in the religious ritual called uh, koda okay so uh, um, as you can see here uh, and the important incidents the important uh, you can say the you know uh, significant stages of the story you can say okay so these are some of the significant story which i am recapitulating for you people uh, the narrator along with saturn and daniel um, left the small tibetan village of 
Ravu and headed towards Mount Kailash. So the narrator was in uh, was accompanied by his driver called Satan uh, and and another person called Daniel. Okay, so. Uh, Satan is a driver as well as a tourist guide you can say Daniel was also helping him with some of the information and they left the small Tibetan village of Rabu uh, for Mount Kailash okay and then uh, on the way he was describing about uh, some of the things like uh, Drokas Drokas mean the shepherds and all that okay, who are tending the flo uh, flock of sheep so uh, he described about the drokas and then he discussed about uh, the uh, Tibetan mastiff, okay, the hunting dogs, you can say. The huge Tibetan mastiffs often chase the car like a running bullet barking furiously, okay. So the, the writer was describing about, uh, uh, you know, Tibetan mastiffs who are very uh, hefty, very, very fat and very healthy and very very adventurous okay tibetan mastiffs uh, and they used to chase their car the, their vehicle like a running bullet okay and they were barking furiously as well at the vehicle okay then then, then they reached a place called hor hor was on the shore of lake manas sarovar okay Lake Manas Saravar is a very religious uh, place and uh, it's, uh, it, it's this lake is very much picturesque and this lake has lot of healing effect in the mind. Okay, If you ever visit this lake, uh, Lake Manas Saravar, it, uh, it will have a tremendous impact in your mind. You shall experience positive vibration and your mind will undergo a tremendous change okay you shall have healing effect uh, on your mind by visiting this uh, sacred place and then uh, this sacred lake also called lake manasarava the much celebrated and sacred source of four great rivers of india so manasarava is the uh, you know source of four great rivers of india Manas Sarovar. Okay, so while explaining you um, this lesson, I told you about Manas Sarovar. Okay, but nowadays, uh, what happens? You know, nowadays the the pilgrims they have littered the things here and there, their you know food stuff or water bottles and all other stuff here and there. As a result, the pristine beauty. The pristine beauty of the place has uh, gone down and that is what the writer was very very disappointed about okay the writer was disappointed about uh, about Hor. he was also disappointed about a place called darchan why because these two places were earlier very very pure pristine neat and clean but as the population is increasing as the you know as the people are visiting more and more in great number in large number you know they have they are not taking care of the environment so environment factor is something that they the human beings do not take care of much okay there are few people who are very much sensitized about this they are taking care of this but mostly people are not taking care of this okay therefore Hor and uh, Darchan, these two places have become very much polluted, very, very polluted, therefore, and dirty, therefore, the writer was very much uh, unhappy about these two places, okay? Now, you can see the author was disappointed at the pathetic condition of Hor, okay? Uh, because of the reason that I have just described to you. They are were well, they were delayed in hold as Satan had to fix up two punctures. So they got held up in hold because of the tire punctures. Okay, so Satan had to uh, fix up two punctures, uh, and in the meanwhile, the writer was uh, sparing uh, spending his time in a tea stall. Okay, then they started for Darchan. Where did they start for afterwards? Then they started for Darchan. 
Darchan was a small town as dirty as Hope. Darchan was a very small town which was as dirty as Hope. There were a few general stores selling Chinese cigarettes and basic provisions. Okay, population is also very very less, and few general stores were there. Uh, okay, which are selling some basic provisions, and then the narrator. The narrator realized that he had come too early for the pilgrimage because he could not see any uh, any pilgrim, any pilgrim or the people who used to visit uh, Darchan for doing the religious uh, ritual called uh, Kora. So he could not see any of them, any of the visitors. Uh, so therefore, he came to the conclusion that um, that he had come too early for the pilgrimage. And after that, what happens, dear students? As you can see, uh, after that, uh, you know the narrator Moravar has become very, very lonely also because Satan has left him now. Okay, because uh, he was supposed to bring the narrator till Darchan, so his driver has left him. So he has become absolutely you know, lonely. Therefore, he was uh, aspiring for someone, uh, somebody, some. Uh, English speaking company. Okay, he was looking for some English speaking company because the local people of Darchan do not know uh, the English language. Therefore, it was difficult for him to communicate with them. Then, while he was one day in, an, in the afternoon, while he was sitting in a uh, you know tea stall or somewhere in a hotel, he could come to know, he could uh, meet, uh, meet. A uh, Chinese uh, Tibetan uh, person called Norbu. Okay, Norbu. He was also an academician, like the narrator. So as and when he met uh, the Chinese academician called Norbu, he became absolutely relaxed and very very happy. Because why was uh, why did he become happy? Because he could then communicate with someone who can speak English. Okay. So uh, as you can see here. While sitting in a cafe, he met Narbu, a Tibetan academician who was a writer on the Kailash Kora. Okay, so um, and see, he was a specialist um, on the topic Kora. He was he was a writer, academician, and a writer who was doing a research, who was doing research on, who was doing a research on um, on uh, the Kailash Kora. So even though he was doing, but ironically, even though ironically, uh, uh, the fact is that even though he was uh, doing religious kora, but still he himself did not undergo kora. So that is why he came down to Darchan uh, to complete the religious kora. Okay, that is why uh, that is how he has met the narrator. So while sitting in a cafe, he met Norbu, a Tibetan academician who was a writer on the Kailash kora. They decided to take the pilgrimage together, and then they decided to go to the pilgrimage together, uh, and they agreed on uh, hiring some yaks to carry the luggage. Okay, and when they decided to take the pilgrimage together, they have also agreed to uh, agreed to uh, hire some yaks so that uh, you know they can. Uh, uh, they can carry their luggage, and on the um, and in the meantime, they can also uh, uh, you know go on foot. Uh, they can climb up the mountain for doing um, kora. Okay, uh, so uh, dear students, that's all about um, this lesson recapitulation. Also, okay, so uh, now we can uh, wind up this. Okay. But before that, I would like to tell you uh, that uh, we have, uh, with the with the completion of this lesson, we have come to the end of the our syllabus. Now I shall uh, I shall teach you some grammar lessons. Okay, some grammar topics which were left out, and some tips on the writing part, writing part, and then. I shall give you uh, some worksheets to practice uh, from literature. Okay, I shall start my revision now. The course is over. Okay, so that was the last lesson. That is, uh, Silk Road was the last lesson which I have completed. So, um, uh,
uh, now you can see um, i shall um, i shall uh, continue with some grammar lessons with you okay so that you are able to uh, perform well in grammar what i have noticed in the examination like uh, uh, you did not do uh, well in the uh, reading skill most of you did not do well in reading skill and also uh, some of you did what you know some of you wrote notice in front uh, instead of writing the um, poster so um, uh, there are two different uh, topics therefore i could not give you marks those who have written notice in place of uh, you know poster i could not give them marks okay um, so um, you know in writing skills some problem was there and then uh, there was some problem in the reading section as well uh, reading section as well and grammar also you know some of you could not do well with the grammar part mm, but mostly the reading part and literature mm, literature part also some marks uh, some of you did not do well okay so anyway there are some who have really done well but mostly uh, students have made mistakes uh, in literature section the mcq part of literature uh, mcq part of reading Mm, and some of them have written notice writing in place of poster writing so this is how their marks have gone down okay two marks and three marks literature you've done very well uh, two marks and four marks literature you've done very well but mcq i think you need to uh, practice a bit more because in mcq your performance was not wasn't good enough okay uh, <laughs> So, uh, Pravash, your marks have already <coughs> been entered actually. So, yeah, some of your marks are already entered. Mm, let me, mm, I, but I can I show it now? I, I don't think I can show it now uh, because I need to, then I need to log into the thing actually. Mm, if I log into another account, then this account will be logged out. Okay, so definitely in my next lecture, I shall uh, disclose your marks. Okay, your dis uh, disclose your marks. You have uh, scored uh, mostly like in the range of uh, range of say for example twenty seven to thirty three. In this range, most of you have scored twenty seven to thirty uh, three. Uh, those who could not score or th those who could not uh, go past 30 mark uh, uh, they made a lot of mistakes in, in, in reading skill, in literature MCQ, in grammar, uh, uh, in these three and moreover they have written notice writing as I told you instead of poster writing. So this is how they have uh, uh, made a mess. So therefore they could not uh, cross the 30, 30 mark. 30 uh, uh, point mark okay so but mostly good students they scored good marks 34 35 mostly they have scored okay so um, you don't worry you focus on your uh, revision part uh, but remember like uh, you need to practice uh, mcq part okay mcq part is very important which you need to practice on a regular basis and reading skill also see mcq appears to be uh, you know easy but it's not so easy like if you do not know the content it's difficult at times for you uh, mcq and uh, with new education policy coming up next year onwards what will happen you know uh, like now the questions on road learning will be very very few they will give you mostly on uh, concept learning uh, they will give you mostly on concept and your understanding application part application part questions will be more concept based questions will be more hots based questions will be more now uh, you know like uh, root learning or mugging up questions will be very very uh, a few okay almost it, they won't be there therefore uh, understanding the concept is very important for you now Okay, so what I suggest you to improve your you know, literature MCQ performance, you please go through each and every line of the text because until and unless students uh, start reading the text, uh, they can never improve their performance in MCQ. Okay, because you never know from which line the MCQ is coming. 
okay so therefore i suggest you each and every lesson from now onwards you start uh, start reading and uh, you start reading and you also underline those uh, you know paragraphs or those uh, you can say those sentences which you think are important in terms of uh, mcq so the only remedy for you to score good marks in mcq is to is to go through the text of the lesson okay just don't uh, write your exam by uh, going through the notes okay it is very important that you uh, go through the text of the lesson then you can definitely improve your performance in mcq and uh, when it comes to your um, reading skill i think it is not so difficult uh, if you can uh, take up an approach of paragraph uh, you know paragraph approach like don't go through the whole para whole passage together just read one paragraph and then see whether any question is there from the questions uh, given and uh, after you have answered uh, from paragraph 1 go to paragraph 2 instead of uh, going through para uh, four paragraphs for example together uh, you go paragraph wise read paragraph 1 first then see the questions then write the answers from paragraph 1 then uh, proceed to paragraph 2 and you need to be a bit slow uh, you, you don't you know be very fast while reading the paragraphs okay because you need to understand also because uh, like there are some questions which require a lot of understanding and application based questions so therefore you need to go a bit slow in your approach when it comes to answering uh, the reading skill questions okay and uh, mcq i already told you you need to be um, need to be uh, you need to go through the text of the uh, of each and every lesson especially the prose lessons to be able to uh, answer the um, answer the mcq literature questions and when it comes to poetry they are giving mostly the figure of speech literary devices uh, questions from the poetry so when you are going through the poems you should uh, take up uh, you, you should find out all the literary devices like alliteration is there like personification is there like metaphor is there like simile is there so all this uh, from each and every line is better if you can find out the uh, uh, find out the literary devices because mostly questions are given from literary devices from poems okay and from prose as i told you you need to go through the text of each and every lesson to improve your performance in uh, mcq mm -hmm. <coughs> questions okay so dear students uh, uh, next class we shall uh, begin with a new grammar lesson okay new grammar topic and uh, this week we shall um, uh, focus on the grammar topic and next week onwards we will take up the revision practice okay so um, you please uh, update your lesson notes in the meantime okay uh, whatever i send you the link of you please up update your lesson notes and we shall meet in uh, i shall disclose proverbs uh, your marks uh, in my next class okay it's already ready so i'll certainly keep it ready for you people to be displayed on the screen uh, in my next class okay so um, how many of you are there uh, uh, how many of you are watching can you please uh, write yes text me yes so that i understand mm, okay uh, anam sadha utkarsh uh, anam sadha utkarsh uh, thank you mm, uh, pratik arya divedi sohani ashutosh sadha patel okay thank you so much dear students uh, we shall take up uh, new topics of grammar in the next class so please be present and after that we shall start with the literature thank you so much all of you thank you so much um, sohani all of you tanvi pravash mm. yeah no it's not yours pravash i'll i'll disclose everybody's now what is the problem in letting you know the, your marks okay so i shall disclose everyone's with Karsh. Uh, Sadvika, Mayur and all, everyone. Okay, so I shall keep it ready so that I can disclose it as 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 soon as the class starts. Okay, in my next lesson. Thank you, dear students. Bye bye. Take care.